Before we do anything, we're gonna add the McCool Auto sticker. Link is in the description below. So this is your first time looking at the car. It is. What do you think, Briar? It's really straight. That is true, that is very true. So the story goes on this car, it was a one owner car for the most part, at least in the same family. So the story goes, a guy bought this thing bare bones, basic, no radio, nothing. I mean, as basic as you could buy a car, that's exactly what he did. He drove it, ended up giving it to his sister. She drove it up until 1994 when she bought a new Pontiac of all things. So this car got pushed outside, Pontiac got parked inside, and it sat ever since. So nearly 30 years it's been outside, but for some reason it survived. It's not rusty, except for a, like a couple small places like back here. See a little rust where all the B bodies do? Not bad, really not bad. Inside the trunk, not bad. So it had some like dinky 90s Ford wheels on it over there. We found the original hubcaps and put some 14 inch stock steel wheels on it. My door stuck. Door stuck. Let me see if I can help you out. Oh! I don't know, that handle stuck too. You might be out of luck. Try the back door. It's more like butter. <laughs> it's funny how these cars are just so common, but they, four doors just held up better. I guess because they weren't mistreated like the, the race car variants were, you know? We've got the full back seat. We've got some trim, looks like, that goes to the quarter panels, I'm assuming. Look at the floors. Really, really nice rubber floor mat. That's probably why it stayed so solid all these years because it didn't rust out. And as you can see, there's that third pedal. It's pushed all the way to the floor, so that's not good. Don't know what the story is on that. We'll have to dig into that here in a minute. And funny enough, this car is a radio delete car. Again, the only option they had was a heater for the most part. I think that's standard. It's bare as bare can get. Zero options, three speed manual, slant six, no radio, no nothing, Briar. That's could pretty you, lame. Could you drive this, you think? I don't know, it's too basic. It is very I basic. I need some music. I've opened this hood before and I, I don't even remember how to do it. Am I supposed to reach all the way in here? Holy moly. Oh, there it is, okay. But look at this. It's an engine, slant six, again as basic as it could be. Uh, no power steering, no power brakes, no AC, just a heater. And that's really, that's really about it. Looks like at some point somebody decided to spruce it up a little bit, put a little Ford blue on it for some reason. I wanna see if it's locked up. Uh, uh. Oh, no it's not. Hey, anything in here? Ew, some things rattling in there. You dipstick, hello? Hey, found you. Ew, but it's full. Ooh, my favorite. Holly One Barrel, this is the 1920, and it does not look good. Ooh, get a close up of that. Look at that rust in there. You see that? That is gross. But it's moving, the choke moves at least. What about the throttle? Ooh, no, not very good. Not very good, it sticks. The guy who picked up the car, who bought it from the original owner, had bought a couple things for it. Let me show you. So he went ahead and bought a new carburetor for it. Look at that. I didn't even know they made these. How shiny, <laughs> that's so good. Just for the sake of doing things, I want to see if we can make it run before we do anything because there's things like locked up or rattling or something really bad about it. We're done. Let's start with checking for anything at all, uh, basically. Spark, fuel, air, the will to live. Just kidding. Battery. Look at how like complete this thing is. I mean, it's missing a couple small things like the washer bottle has probably exploded about, you know, 40 years ago. So just the motors left. But look how clean it is. I mean, it's rusty. Got a couple wires like twisted together over here. Overall though, as far as like originality is concerned, this car is super nice. I'm, I'm impressed by it. The whole firewall is clean. Even though it sat outside, they did at least halfway try to take care of it. So uh, I mean, I'm happy with that. So we've got a battery here. I'm gonna drop it in to just see, does anything work? And thankfully, the battery hold down's right there. So no ratchet straps for you, Cornette. Oh boy, there you go. 
You hear that? Oh, oh. Did it just try to start? Oh, the, look, the battery cable is touching. The starter relay, the solenoid is, that's where uh, you, cr you can cross it over right there. Somebody had replaced this at one point. I wonder if that's why, like, they never messed with it after that. Because it's trying to crank right now. So, we did this. <laughs> it's trying to start the car. So, all I did was loosen this up and angle it up slightly. We're going to just tighten it back up. And now they're not touching. So now let's try it. Is the key on? Oh yeah, because it's a 70 and that unlocks the column. Oh yeah, we do have a key, so that does help. I know, shocking, right? For once we have a key. Couple major problems. Well, besides getting it running. The shifter mechanism, I don't know what it's doing, but it's not, that's the problem. It just, it's stuck in neutral. It doesn't want to move at all. There we go, no more clickies. Let me just see if it'll do anything if I bump the key now. Oh, that's good. That sounded really good actually. Oh, come here. The heater's, the heater's blowing. Can you hear that? I don't know how to turn it off. Off, hello? Oh no. It's all cables, and none of that's gonna move. So we just have a permanent heater now. Oh, okay, sweet. Do we check for spark or just dump gas down it? And... Gas. <laughs> Briar's ready, it's cold. He wants to be done. I've got some fresh 87 octane just for this baby. It's got one giant vacuum leak right there. That's all I see. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I missed the whole thing. Whoops. <laughs> Why? Why is it so good? We might not even need this. Holy, holy smokes. That, that just ran. And, okay. Whew. I need a break. That was a lot. Do you realize what just happened, folks? This thing has been sitting since 1994 for nearly 30 years. We didn't touch anything. It has spark and it ran. I, we did nothing. All you saw us do was what you see on camera. Usually you're going through spark, you're going through broken plug wires, you're going through chasing everything, every little gremlin. This car just ran and we didn't do anything. So I normally cut the fuel line or the hose at least that goes from the supply side of the pump so that way nothing gets sucked out of the tank. But fun little fact that I'll tell you and I'll show you later, the fuel tank is completely rusted out. So didn't have to do it this time, folks, but next time we certainly will. So what we're gonna try and do is rig up some kind of uh, temporary fuel system and see if we can make something work. Uh, bless you, Dixie. Good gracious, is she okay? Look at her. What in the world are you doing? Oh, she's hiding. She went stealth. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Come here. Come here. Do you like cornets? Do you like cornets? Oh, she's looking for a toy. She wants me to throw it really bad. That's the original fuel hose, looks like. It's got the original clamps on it and everything. Wow. This thing is super original. We've got both carburetors here. Uh, the only problem is, is that this linkage here is different. So I'm going to remove the base plate here carefully. Well, our linkage situation didn't want to work. Believe it or not, we got this one out, with the old carburetor, but I managed to strip a screw on the throttle blade. You gotta take the, bl the throttle blade out to slide the whole thing out and I stripped a screw in there. So it's not coming out. So instead of dealing with all that, we're just gonna continue on. I'll put this thing back together. But looking at it, it's literally full of rust. It makes me think the car car's like been underwater or something. Oh! But I do need this little fitting so we can put it here and hope that it doesn't leak. It's close enough. You know what? You didn't see this. That's good enough. Let's bolt it on. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Nice and shiny. Finger tight's good enough, right? 3 8 is fine, right? On the 5 16 barb? Your silence is deafening, right? <laughs> Electric pump. Nice, fresh, 
fresh, fresh. I can't, I can't even begin to emphasize how fresh this gas is. We'll just fill it up real fast. Hey look, our new carburetor doesn't leak. Okay, let me see, get a couple squirts of gas. Oh yeah, she's priming. If it idles, I'm gonna be, I don't know if I'm gonna be mad or shocked, or both, probably all three. Ready? Go for it. Uh-oh. Hello? What, what happened? Are you kidding me? Look at that battery cable. Oh, God. It's on there, I wedged it. Nothing's happening now. What? Now I'm mad. What? Oh! Why did the clutch pedal come up? Did you pick it up? Yeah, I picked it up, but I didn't. I don't think it has a neutral safety switch in the clutch, does it? That's dumb. I pushed it back down. What the it heck? It does. <laughs> Who would have expected that? I didn't know in 1970 they had neutral safety switches in the clutch pedal. That's pretty cool. We're also working with no choke, so let's close it. Bombs away. What was that sound? Here, you come over here and work the key for me. Wow. Do it again. Dang, we don't have any coolant in it, so we'll just let her calm down for a second. That runs really, really well. She's solid. Wow. It's not even real. <laughs> it's too easy. Well, it's a new day, and we've traded the uh, cold temperatures for some wind. Uh, we're gonna try and pull the steering wheel off because I think there's a bushing inside here. At least on the last one I worked on, that bushing was really gummed up. And if I can get to it, I can spray something on it and get it to move back and forth and then hopefully lock into gear and do something. But that, and then we gotta sort out the clutch pedal, but that's for another time. There we go. I have the column torn down here. What I'm gonna do is spray some of this lightning bolt blaster from Rogo. And you can see I've been using it a lot because it's really good. So I spray just a little bit on that side, up in there. Oh yeah, look there. See now it wants to move back and forth. And hopefully, now that it can do that, I think that's first. So that should be first, there's second, and if I go back to the middle, it should spring back. Oh yeah, look, that's neutral. Up is all the way in third. So there you go. Or actually, that's reverse, first, second, third. Okay, there we go. I forgot about reverse. So reverse is here, first, second. Seems like it's kind of a little stuck. We might have to wiggle the shifter underneath, but third gear. So we at least have first gear, so we can move it up to the shop now and reverse. I'm telling you guys, lightning bolt blaster, it's pretty serious. If you want to check it out, definitely check out Rogo's website. You cannot go wrong with getting some of their lightning bolt blaster. You've got steering wheel back on. There's first, reverse, second, and third. So we've got all our gears back. We just really need to figure out what's going on with our clutch situation. Because as of right now, <laughs> it's buried to the floor. So I don't know why it's doing that, but we're gonna sort it out. Well, we've uh, narrowed it down. It's not anything within the mechanism underneath the car. It's definitely within the bushing inside uh, the car here. So I can tell that there's, like this is a little play that goes in between engaging the clutch and not engaging the clutch. So there's a little bit of play and that spring will not return it. So it's gotta be the bushing inside. So what I'm gonna do, torch it. 
I did this last time. I was trying to melt the bushing out just so it would move, and uh, it actually started working for some reason, so I don't know. But we're just gonna cook it and see if there's anything happening. Yeah, it's a little smoky, a little nasty. Try not to breathe this in if you can help it. <laughs> moving a little better still not excellent but I'm gonna keep trying this and they'll report back here in just a second all right well none of that worked so we're just gonna go ahead and hop in the car work with the clutch and just drive it up to the shop so I can tear it all apart and try to clean it maybe put new bushings in it or something. But as of right now, it works enough to be able to, I hope, drive it. So we got our fuel pump and tank set back up. We'll see if we can move up to the house real fast, but I have high hopes for it. I can't reach the clutch pedal. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I can't reach the pedal. I guess the only way is just grab it. Uh oh. The clutch is all the way out and it's in gear. Nope. Reverse. <laughs> it has nothing, Briar. In all gears, it doesn't do anything. It was running with the clutch fully out in gear and it doesn't do anything. I'm starting to wonder if the clutch is bad. Like maybe that's why it's not releasing is because the diaphragm isn't working I don't know <laughs> dang I was hoping to drive it up the shop all our hopes and dreams are just crushed right then so guess we're gonna hook a train up to it and pull it up to the shop and see what's wrong with it We got the old cornet up on the lift and we want to just inspect everything and see what we're up against when it comes to this car. Starting from the rear, I mentioned this, our gas tank. <laughs> well, it's seen better days for sure. And you can see even the sending unit, that's the sending unit right there. And it's, well, yep, that's it right there. So it's pretty bad. And a lot of times these B bodies will have rotten frame rails out back, you know, but for some reason this one didn't. We've got an eight and three quarter rear axle. That's good. Um, I'm not sure if that's standard equipment with the six cylinder or the manual. We talked about that, me and dad, but we don't know. We really don't know. It does have an open 323 right here. You can see the tag. 
That's all original, pretty neat. Uh, the floor pans, they're not bad. We've got some holes right here on the rear, a couple pinholes right there, nothing too crazy. The worst of it is really right here up under the driver. Uh, that's pretty much gone. Same thing over here, it's, it's pretty rough, but nothing too bad that we're, we're not gonna fall through it. But the frame rails up front, really nice, really secure, solid all the way around. You know, just some wear and tear as far as like these tie rod ends and everything. They're, they're nasty, but they're not bad. I sprayed all this with that lightning bolt blaster and, whoop, oh, okay. Well, I forgot I took that off. There needs to be a pin there. <laughs> it's like a reverse lockout rod. So we'll just pretend like that didn't happen. So Briar is gonna be having a blast here, uh, working on more Mopar clutch stuff. My favorite. Your favorite? Oh, you really like the stuff. Well, I guess I'll let you do all of it then. We're thinking that the uh, pressure plate and the diaphragm is actually stuck and it's stuck to the engaged position. So once we get this inspection plate off, we can actually see what's going on. That's, that's my professional guess. I don't know. What do you think, Briar? Professional? Well, yeah, you're right. Oh, ooh, nasty. Whoa. Animal. Ew. What in the world was living in that? Is that that's not clutch material, is it? I don't, mm, that could be an animal. Let's see, what's the verdict? There's no clutch disc, that's why. <laughs> it's, it's literally gone. Look, right in there, there's no clutch disc at all. Nothing. That's what all this material is here. So somebody cooked the clutch right before it got parked. Wow, that's bad. So we ain't driving it until it gets a clutch put in it. Got the transmission loose, got all the linkages loose. Should be ready to pull this thing out here in a minute. Uh oh, hot? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Well, sorry folks, my camera died right as soon as we started pulling that out. We can easily get to the clutch and the pressure plate now, but hey, we missed that, but it just died as soon as we started. Here's the three speed. Uh, we'll clean up all this right here because this is where our throw up bearing rides and just make sure it goes back in. Uh, just as easily as it did coming out. So really, really simple, not too bad at all. We got to order a clutch, get the flywheel resurfaced, and that should get us back on the road. Well, we got the old clutch out and wow, is it bad. So here's our pressure plate. It looks okay. I mean, it's just normal wear and tear and especially not to be moving a while, it's, it's pretty normal. The problem is this clutch disc. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but there's no clutch material left on this thing. It's just, metal. I don't know if they cooked it. I don't know if it just fell apart over time or what the heck happened, but this is honestly the worst clutch disc I've ever seen. I mean, besides if there was like a, a mechanical failure, like something actually breaking off, this is as bad as it can get because there's no material left on this thing. So every time you're letting off the pedal, there's nothing to grab to. And I'm surprised it didn't make like a terrible noise, but that explains why this can't hold pressure on our pressure plate and release the clutch pedal when you let go. Now that was a nine and a quarter or nine and a half inch clutch. We have a 10 inch clutch to upgrade it. Now, since this is a six cylinder, we're not making a ton of power yet, at least. This is just a stock replacement. We've got a brand new pressure plate and a good clutch that actually has material on both sides. Well, there's a flywheel. Luckily, as bad as the clutch disc was, it did not damage the flywheel too bad. We're gonna resurface this bad boy. So that looks fantastic. Everything came out looking fine. No low spots, no bad things that came from it. So we can pop this back in and have everything fresh and brand new. <laughs> we'll have to excuse the rain. It's coming to flood outside today. But we've got our flywheel ready to slide back up into the bell housing. Perfect. Uh, get in there. Uh. Got the pressure plate bolted down. Time to slide this three speed back into its home. Come on, little buddy. Welcome back. Yeah, it's, it's touching it now. All right, transmission is ready to be bolted in. There you have it, folks. There's a new clutch and pressure plate in. We have all the linkage hooked back up. Everything is shifting properly. The clutch is adjusted. That helps a lot. So that was our big problem. The clutch now operates and does things that it should. 
and out back. Briar went ahead and got the drive shaft bolted back in. So we're gonna let it down in the lift and see, can it move back and forth now? Whew, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Surely this thing should be better than what it was before. How does the pedal feel? Feels good. Okay, I'm in neutral. It just cranked before we start all this. What's happening? Oh, duh, I forgot about the neutral safety switch again. I got. I'm hearing sparks inside the column. I'm wondering if it's. Ooh. I wonder if it's losing power. There's something sparky in here. It should have cranked by now. Something's wrong with the ignition switch, so I ran a jumper wire from the battery to the ballast, so it should run. For some reason, it's just the switch is mad. All right, we're running. Oh, they just don't want to stay running. Going to reverse. Oh. Yep, we're moving. <laughs> Forward, first. Yep, it engages way too low, but it, it's working. We've got forward, we've got reverse. Hopefully we have other gears. I don't know yet, but it works. Thank goodness, because that was a, oh, it was a lot wet and rare. <laughs> well, we did it. Here's the problem. The car is cool, but it's not cool enough. It sits a little too high. Let's take a look. From right there, right, whoop, right at 22 and a half exactly. Now I'm thinking more of like there. We've got three inch lowering blocks for the rear. We can bring this car down that far. And we were just talking, we could flip the front leaf spring perches and bring it down probably another two inches. So that's so then 17 and a half. So that would put it down there. That's low. <laughs> That's five inches lower right there. And then the torsion bars up front, super simple to do. So I'm lifting the car up, and of course the gas tank is angling up, and I got showered on of rust and went down into my neck hole in my shirt. Look at that. <laughs> oh my, what the heck? I've never had a gas tank. I could peel. That is the most paper thin metal I have ever seen that should not be like that. This is bad. <laughs> It's just crumbling. Hang on. <coughs> wow! Inside the trunk, not bad. Never in my 27 years have I ever seen a gas tank that bad. This is what's left. No more rust falling on our heads at least. We tried to break them loose. They are fighting us, no impact. The breaker bar, it's like popping like crazy. Even if we got them off, we wouldn't reuse these anyway. So we're just gonna cut them. There. 
That was tough. There it is, it's out. Slight change of plans. We're gonna lift it seven inches in the air. Ooh, baby. We've got U-bolts that are way too long. Comes with all the hardware to uh, tighten it all back down in the three inch blocks, of course. So uh, we need to lift the rear back up and then we're gonna put these blocks in place. I can't wait, let's do this. One block. and two blocks. And the cool thing is, is that everything we've done here, we can reverse. I've got other U-bolts in case we ever want to go back, so no harm, no foul. Well, we're gonna have to remove the pinion snubber because it's about a half inch from the floor, but here we go. Oh my gosh. That's really low. Oh my gosh. We're tucking tired. Hold on, we were at 22 and a half before. So we're about 19 and three quarters. So it didn't bring it down a full three inches, about two and three quarter inches. <laughs> and the shocks bolted up, so we're good. But wow, wow. Yeah, I don't know about flipping that. That put us another two inches lower. That's a lot. Why is it level though? I guess it's because it had the pawpaw stance. See, it's right at 24 inches. So we could probably bring it down an inch or two and get away with that. Let's do it, let's lower it, who cares? The driver's side, right at 24, 25, okay? But uh, usually five turns equals one inch. There's five. Five. So that's, that should be about an inch. Let's just check me. We need to cycle the suspension. Let me find out where it's actually gonna ride. So it's probably gonna be sitting a little higher than what we actually would uh, determine. So this is, what we say, 24? That's 23 and a half. Yep, see now that one's down to 24. So this one actually did pretty good, but the other side is about a half inch lower still. What do you think? Should we come down a little more? I think we should, don't you? Yeah, it needs to come down more. Uh, three, half, look at that pry bar. Woo, man. Thank you. So we're on the bump stops on the lower control arm. We're probably gonna have to remove those, but we were at 24 and three quarter over here. Now we're at mm, maybe 23 and a quarter. Oh, hang on, I just cycled the suspension. I just told y'all to do, yeah, look, bump stops. So it ain't gonna go anywhere. And that one's at 23 and a quarter too. But again, bump stops are in the way. Let's take a step back. I like that. We're sitting way low, woo. So the brakes, they spin and there's nothing really in there. I don't, I don't know. I'm hoping that the shoes are actually okay. We're gonna pop this wheel off here. Luckily, these things are not stuck. So it should hopefully be a matter of just popping up the inner wheel bearing and getting this thing out of here. But uh, who knows? You know, also we've got to take out the uh, bump stops because we are riding on them currently. We may take them out, cut them flat and then put them back in, but we need those out of there. Get this spindle nut off here. I'm curious to see how bad it is. Oh yeah, it's gonna come right off. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, that looks great. Okay, yeah, we can work with that. Dang, the wheel cylinders really don't look that bad. So it could be more of the trouble within the uh, master cylinder than it is actually the wheel cylinders. But since we're here, we can go ahead and replace all this. I've got new wheel cylinders and I've got new brake hoses. It's just easier. Oh my gosh, these were, yeah, these brakes were done right before it was parked. It might be hard to tell, but you can still see where these were resurfaced. I mean, there's a little surface rust from sitting, but yeah, these are absolutely perfect. There's no reason to not reuse all this stuff. Let's get this old wheel cylinder out of here. 
It's seen better days. I'm going to pop this new one in, like so. Well, there we go. That one's back together. I went ahead and put the drum back on and uh, tightened everything down. We put a new brake hose on it while we were in there. So we've got a new brake hose, new wheel cylinder, and uh, everything should work hydraulically on this side. So now all we got to do is three more times. Simple enough, right? There's all the brakes done. Put the drum back together. You can see, got the uh, new brake hose going into our new wheel cylinder. Everything, again, on this side looked fantastic. And while we were here, we went ahead, trimmed the bump stop. You can see right there, the upper control arm, or the lower control arm was hitting right here. So the bump stop was basically bottomed out. So cut about, I don't know, inch and a half maybe out of it. And that should make it right at least not on that, but if we have to, we can either take them out or raise it back up. Next order of business is what's going on with the trunk? Well, it's this. <laughs> uh, we were able to get the trunk open because this was broken. This whole trunk support latch had been removed somehow. So the son of the owner was pulling real hard on the trunk and it actually ripped this out, this trunk support brace. So we're gonna try and bend it back down, maybe I don't know if there's a good spot to weld to, but we'll see. But look in here. I mean, we've got some uh, vintage Diet Right Colas. <laughs> how cool is that? There's no telling how old these things are. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six of these bad boys in here. And an old bicycle pump. Oh, it still works. Whenever we pulled the gas tank out, all of it basically fell through. So there's really no trunk floor left. I might just leave this rubber mat here and pretend like there's nothing wrong. And we've got to mount some kind of fuel tank and I have just the fix. I was gonna try and weld it, but everything underneath this is falling apart. So realistically to fix this properly, you would need to cut the whole trunk floor out and redo it, but we're not doing that. Bolt that one down, be good as new. And theoretically speaking, we should be able to. Oh, it's too low. It's a good thing about these, they're adjustable. And, aha! Oh. You know what? For now, that is good enough. There you go. All right, now that we have a functioning trunk, here comes the next step. I need to clear out my bottles here. So I bought this in a junkyard. It's a aluminum tank that is meant for gas. It was in a rock crawler Dodge Dakota somebody had built 
and it was really janky. But this was ratchet strapped to the bed, for, like to the frame rails basically where the bed sits. So we're gonna take and self tapper this in. We've got a supply hose that will hook up down to our original fuel line and then that'll be plenty of gas to actually make it work. It even has a sending unit, which was weird to me. Like this is about as legit as a piece of junk can get. And we can have provisions for a return hose if we needed it. So look at that, pretty handy, ain't it? And it won't rust out because it's aluminum. All right, tank is in. And uh, as you can see, it's leaning to one side and it's tilted backwards because of the way the trunk floor is shaped and we had to offset it to one side because of how wonky all the floor is with the rust. But we at least favored our pickup side to the bottom. So we'll just be able to run this hose up through the floor and we'll be good to go. There's the hose pulled through the floor pan. <laughs> Look at that. Not much left. The briar has slid it onto our factory fuel line. We're about to fill this thing up and see if it'll pump fuel. I'm gonna put a few gallons in here. Just see if it works. Ah! Maybe not make a mess in the process. Create a fire hazard. That ought to be enough to try and crank it. I'll save a couple gallons just in case something happens. But it didn't fall through the floor, so that's a good sign. I like that. Nothing yet. That was weird. Might put the pump on this line right here and just see if we can draw anything through it. But if not, the, either that hose is stopped up, the pump's bad, or the line is shot. So we just took the electric pump and hooked it on the, the metal line there. Hopefully that'll do something. Should be able to pull past that mechanical pump, but it's not. Briar is unhooking the line that supplies the fuel pump. And we started seeing fuel coming out of it and it did not look pleasant. But that means fuel is in there, so that's good. Oh, I hear, yeah, there we go. That's nasty. Trying to get some clean gas. There we go. That's flowing clean now. Briar's pulling out the uh, old fuel pump here. We've determined that that was the problem and we tried our best to make sure it would be the problem. So we pulled one off of another vehicle that we know for a fact works and we're gonna swap it out real quick. There you go. That honestly looks better than that one. It really does, it really does. But we did test it. We tried it and tried it and tried it and it wouldn't work. So that one I know for a fact works. So we'll just swap it out. We had to the only way we could get one, because we're snowed in right now, is if we waited another, what, week? And I don't want to have to wait another week. So sometimes you just got to sacrifice a fuel pump. That's okay. Briar just finished up the fuel pump. We have the tank hooked up, all the fuel line cleaned out. So we should, should see fuel fill up this filter. Oh, there it is. Ooh, it's nasty. That line is gross. It'll self-clean. <laughs> Don't want to stay running. I think in our gasket is really, really petrified. So there's a good chance that it could be leaking. So we might take the base plate and uh, put a little RTV on it to help that. Close the choke all together. That's better. 
Probably a good set of plugs would help too. Well, I think we have a vacuum leak around the base because I took it apart trying to get it, uh, you know, to run right whenever I was changing over linkages. And that didn't work, so I might have not tightened it down enough. But I have an idea. Well, whenever we shut it off, I noticed that there was some smoke coming out from around the gasket, which it really isn't much of a gasket. It's more of just a spacer. <laughs> it's very hard, like it's, it's like a rock. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this RTV. Normally I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I don't have any of these gaskets. And I'm just gonna do a light, thin coat around both sides Tighten that back down, let it dry for a little bit, and we'll see if that helps. Well, it runs, but it keeps wanting to die, so uh, Briar is actually going to unbolt the adjustment screw on the distributor, and we're gonna see if we can maybe give it a little bit more timing. Um, off camera, we had fired it up, and it actually shot fuel and uh, flames out of the carburetor. Holy flipping cow. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Is that better or worse? Probably not. I can see it. It's just one. Who put it down there? That's a great question. I would like to talk to the guys at Chrysler. Who built the one of the greatest engines ever made? Because they suck. Ooh, them's fighting words now. Careful. Uh, <laughs> so much anger. If I had two dozen cornets. And a bunch of six cylinders. Burn them all. Oh my gosh, I might have it. Oh. Please. Oh! oh! It was going the wrong way. Taking the U-joint off. That made my life so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> there what? we go. Sometimes I question my intelligence. Hey, if you don't question your intelligence at least once a day, you're really not trying to learn, you know it? Think about it that way. That was dumb. There you go. I don't know which way is, that's the only, that's all the motion we can get out of it right there. I'm holding my foot on it, but it's idling. I let go off the throttle, it dies. <laughs> Not very snappy like I want it to be. And when I turn it off, I don't think I turned it off. I have no idea. Oh, I left the wire on. Well, I want to check timing, make sure I can get it to, you know, run a little bit better, but I really can't do that until I put some coolant in it. So we're going to run a little water and a little bit of the good green stuff, fill it up and see if we can let it run for a little bit longer. Sit there and run. This thing's running really bad. So we're gonna pull some spark plugs out and just see how they look. If they can be cleaned up, we'll do that. It's just really having a hard time like idling right. So you know, spark plugs cleaning would help. Uh, you know, really checking the timing because the vacuum advance is working and it likes to run with that, but then sometimes it doesn't. They're not, they're really not bad. They're really not bad at all. 
they're I mean they're dirty running a little rich but it's not as bad as you would expect so these are the original champions yeah it smells like old oil and gas I'm gonna buff them up real quick and we'll pop them back in I just saw sparks shoot out of something. I kid you not, it went phew. What was that? Yeah, we had a little fire happen off camera. There's some like rat's nest built up between the intake runners. We're just gonna play around with it a little more, but I think that's better. That's definitely better. Well, came out this morning. Car sat overnight, and uh, a lot of green in the floor, folks. That's not good. Don't know what happened. And the radiator is back empty. So we have to figure out what to do about that. What I'm gonna do right now, while we wait on that, is figure out the carburetor situation because it's not good. I actually have a really good one barrel carburetor off of another slant six manual. We're gonna try that and see if that helps anything. I just think even though it's brand new, something weird is happening with that carburetor and I don't like it. Come on out of there. I don't really know what this is, what kind of carburetor this is, but it's a great one. It's just got a bunch of numbers on the side. It's probably some kind of Carter. If I had to guess, legit, this is the best one barrel I've ever dealt with. Usually all of them are trash. They just never like to work at all. Here's the thing. I hope we can get our gasket that we glued on there off. Oh boy. Yeah, we did a number on that one, didn't we, Briar? Tell me that flathead there. It wasn't any good anyway. Uh-oh, I'm getting pieces in the engine. It'll all come out in the wash, it's fine. And on you go. New carburetor's bolted on. We're gonna see if we can make something work here. and revs way better. Look at the fuel filter. The gas in it is nasty. Woo, it's already turned brown. I just went over here to check the timing and the distributor is so loose that it did fall back and it was way too slow. Much better, much better. Timing was too low. Runs like a sewing machine now, look at that. Revs, yeah, way better. I think we have a good car, Briar. We changed three of those starter relays and it turns out the wire going to the neutral safety switch on the clutch was broken, so there was nothing wrong with the first one. Sorry, Briar. I made him change three of those, and we've been doing that for the past hour. Anyway, now, the one that we put on it does not require a neutral safety switch. So now it works.
smoke started rolling out of the steering column. <coughs> I don't know what it is. You didn't think we were actually done, did you? This thing looks too boring. Yeah, it's lowered. But look at this. It needs paint. Briar came up with a great idea for a two-tone paint scheme that we're about to execute. So as you can see, we're going with a Tennessee State Trooper theme. All that really requires is to paint the top side black. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna tape off all this, paint the hood, the roof, the top sides of the doors, because a lot of the pictures I saw, they just had this section here black. The hard part's really gonna get this and make that look nice and pretty. And then uh, the Dutchman panel, as well as the deck lid. So total cost for paint, sandpaper, and a little spray gun was $45.97. So we're gonna make this car look like a Tennessee State Trooper car for less than $46. Hard to beat. All right, there's all the sanding done. We've taped off just where we kind of want it to be. And we're gonna go back and mask everything in just a second. Just wanted to show you what we've sanded on. There's a couple of rough spots that really isn't gonna come out. Like we've got some heavy pitting in some areas, but we don't really care. I mean, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but the body really is straight and for the most part solid. So uh, I've taped off our two-tone line. So this is where the black will stop and the tan will remain. I am beyond ready. What do you think, Briar? This is your first paint job here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Get out of there. Got a couple dive bombers here. Get out of there, buddy. Where'd you come from? You don't even have wings. Oh, well, he's been separated. I think they're coming from the car, Briar. I think there's ants in the car currently. Yeah, come here, buddy. Hey, listen. I got no beef with y'all. Just get out of my paint. Oh, heck, I laid over the, I laid over that. Mm. <gasps> anyway, it's fine. Here, watch this. Never happened. Well, folks, there you have it. The paint is done, and it looks really, really good. It's not perfect by any means, but for 45 bucks, you really can't beat it. 
I mean, it just laid down really nice and it does the trick. So we're one step closer to having us a Tennessee State Patrol car. We went ahead and popped on these steel wheels, hubcaps, white line tires. Wow, does it look good. That really made the car, in my opinion. It just completely changed the look altogether, having a nice set of wheels and tires. You see Briar's ripping the headliner out because we wanted to make sure the car was presentable enough and uh, he's gonna vacuum out the floor and everything. But just take a look at that crispy, crispy tape job right there. Mm, I am proud of that one. The two-tone really, really sets this car apart. this uh, orange caution light, tinted it red like I like to do, and uh, we put magnets. We actually glued them to the bottom. So there's a magnet inside here because this base is aluminum. Pulling against it, glued on the top, and then we've got magnets glued to the bottom as well. Hopefully when we go down the road it doesn't fall off. And then I've added wire right there. All right, we're cinching her down. It's on there. <laughs> I don't think it's coming off. How's that look? Yeah. Now we did the magnets because we didn't want to have to drill holes into the roof and you know, ruin the car. I mean, we've already painted it, but I don't want to do anything that can't be reversed. All I gotta do is wire it in, put a switch to it, fuse in line and we're good to go. Switch is done, check this out. Huh? It's pretty bright. The last little bit of our Tennessee State Patrol car is to get the Tennessee State seal put on the door. Got these from Phoenix Graphics. I'm gonna do a little soapy water here. Clean the car while we're at it. It looks good. Ooh, nice. Nice. This is the final step in making this car a Tennessee State Trooper clone. Now this is the awesomest little thing. I mean, I'm so excited about this. Mom made these for me and she did a great job. I can't wait to stick these on. And again, this is gonna wrap it up and really seal the deal to make this thing look like a State Trooper car. Well, we discovered our coolant leak and it really wasn't originally what we thought it was. So Briar is actually putting a water pump on right now because of this. Look at that. There's a dang hole in the water pump. That's bad. I mean, it just turns soft. I guess this is a uh, cast iron maybe. I don't know, I thought they'd be aluminum, but it just rotted a hole right through the middle of it. So we put a new water pump on it. That should fix it up. We're about to go for a drive. Briar's buttoned up the water pump, got the fan on, hoses, everything done, and you almost thought I forgot. Got a new oil change for it. Slap this on, and then I promise, we're leaving. It's driving right now.
am in absolute love with this car, folks. This is awesome. This car from zero. I mean, it was a plain Jane bone stock, 70 Cornette with absolutely no options. And it still is. But by George, it looks so much cooler. It runs, it drives, and it stops. And man, is it the ultimate cruiser. They do a car show, drive around, get pretty good gas mileage, and still look really cool doing all that. I am very impressed with this car right now, folks. This is way better than I could have imagined. And honestly, it's just a good car. You could take this car anywhere you wanted to and just drive it now. I, 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 I'll take it to California. Let's do it. Let's go to California now. <laughs> this is so fun. It drives great, it rides smooth. The shifter, for being stuck when we first started, is near flawless. I mean, this car really does drive great. To be sitting for 30 years, the engine is solid. You know, fixing a couple small things and just making the tune really good. This car is great. I mean, it's, it's beyond my expectations and I'm having a blast driving it. I mean, if the speedometer's accurate, let me just find out how accurate is this thing. Cause I did 50 miles an hour earlier and I can't tell you if that was legit or not. Let me get her up to speed real quick. A lot of power. That right there is showing 40 on the dash. Yeah, look at that. That's dead accurate, just about. Look, 40 up here. It's yeah, it's within a mile, basically. We got 40 right there and 40 right there. That right there is 50. Look at that. Pretty accurate. And with those 323s, and it's got a fairly tall tire. I mean, this thing really isn't going to be screaming down the interstate. You could take this thing to a show and, and actually get there with some fairly decent fuel mileage. Not too bad at all. A little 3-2 downshift. Oh. What do you think, Briar? It doesn't ride that bad, does it? No. Be lowered three inches all the way around, you'd think this thing would be scraping the road right now, but it's not. It's tasteful. That's the key. Tasteful, everybody. That's all we ever do. In. We got a runner. Gas pedal? Yeah, there's a gas pedal. There you go. Seconds away from you and up. That was neutral. I hope that's just not reverse. <laughs> there you go. I didn't feel it. Yeah. Second's a little weird on this one compared to the blue truck. Yeah. It is a little weird. And then third straight down. There it is. I see you give me a decent vehicle and I can drive better than the blue truck. Yeah, this one's halfway good, ain't it? Good. Well, maybe three quarter. Oh, I don't know if that's the rear end or if that's the trunk hitting the floor. Like it's bouncing, but there's just stuff all in the trunk. All so, of the above. Yeah, something is bouncing around in the back. Take a second. Oh, straight up. Whoop! Hey! Oh, that's the, that's the <laughs> rear end. Yep, that's the that's the U joint. Need some air shocks, don't we? Maybe. It's too easy now. Yeah. Oh. I think we lost him. Dang it. Oh, there's stuff in the exhaust. 
<laughs> there's a uh, tube right there, a heat riser that will heat up the choke whenever it's cold. And I bet you there's like a bunch of rat's nests and stuff in there on fire currently. So yeah, that's not cooling. That's actually fire. That smells like fire. I didn't even smell it earlier, but I thought someone was just burning something at their house. Nope, it's us. It's us, Briar. We are burning our cornet. Oh man, there's sparks coming out of it. I don't know how it comes up. Is it around the exhaust? Yeah. Well, just shake it, all the stuff out of it loose and then maybe... You know, take it yeah, there's sparks coming out of that. I think we have some water with us. Maybe it's dying. Looks like everything. Yeah, just leave it loose until it all falls out. Then we'll tighten it back up whenever it's done. There's, there was a little campfire in our engine. That makes me feel good about it, don't you? At least the gas tank's in the back. Yeah, except there's a carburetor yeah, right there. Yeah, all that, I guess. <laughs> could have been worse, but it could have been better too. Well, folks, that's going to do it. That'll wrap up our 1970 Dodge Coronet build. I'm very proud with how this thing turned out. We've got a really fun budget police car clone right here that looks really awesome and I think it's going to set itself apart at any car show it goes to and that's exactly what we plan to do. This is actually dad's car and I put this thing together for him so he could drive it, enjoy it, take it to some shows this summer and that's exactly what we plan to do with it. So for not a lot of money this car is from zero to hero basically. I mean mechanically it's brand new and it runs and drives and stops and it looks great with some really budget paint work and I'm very proud with how it turned out. So if you like the video leave a comment let me know what you thought about it. Please leave a like. Don't forget to turn on notifications when you subscribe because every little bit helps out the channel and if you want please go down in the link below get your t-shirts get your stickers because all that money goes directly back into making these cars brand new again. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.